Hello and welcome to the Times of India. I am Nalin Mehta. For the last few days, all of India has been astir with protests around the Citizenship Amendment Act. Initially, there were protests by people who were opposed to the act. Increasingly, now we are seeing protests by people who are supporting the act. And we've had the Prime Minister clarifying in a big public rally what he says his government stands for as far as this path-breaking legislation is concerned. Let's first listen in to what the Prime Minister says, and then we will what we will try and do today with Sanjeev Singh and Sanjeev Shankaran here on this program is to explain what exactly this act is. What does it do? What does it change in the definition of citizenship in our country? Why are people unhappy about it? And why are those who are, who are supporting it, why are they favouring it? But first, let's listen in to what the Prime Minister had to say. सिर्फ सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने जब कहा तो हो सिर्फ आसाम के लिए करना पड़ा क्या बातें कर रहे हैं झूठ बोला है so you heard the Prime Minister there. Now there are four or five big questions that emerge uh, in this entire controversy. The first is, what really is this bill? What does it change for those trying to become Indian citizens? The second is, what is its link with the NRC? Third is, what is the big problem with this bill for those who are protesting against it? And the fourth is, why are those favouring it? Favoring it? Or why are they in support? Sanjeev, let's first take this bill apart threadbare. Legally, what changes now as a result of Parliament passing, or both Houses of Parliament passing this bill? So, this bill deals only with citizenship of people who uh, acquired it through naturalization. For those of us who were born here and got our citizenship, it does not apply, it does not affect us. Right. Now, so, if you, so for Muslims in this country or any other minority, religious minority in this country, there is, who are existing here as legal citizens, there is no change in that. All existing Indian citizens, regardless of their religious denomination, mm -hmm. remain unaffected. Right. Now, the naturalization process of citizenship means that you were born in some other country, you've come here, you've lived here for a while and you've asked for citizenship. Now, that was always open if and only if you came to India legally. Hmm. Right? So, there were two uh, related acts called passport, which covers passports and uh, foreigners' entry. Uh, they uh, classified you as a legal entrant or uh, somebody who came in illegally. And if you came in illegally, which means essentially without papers and it would mm. apply to most refugees mm. who are fleeing persecution. Mm. The pathway to citizenship was permanently closed. Even right. if you live here for 50 years, you cannot get citizenship. Right. Now what this act does and uh, prior to amending this act, uh, changes to the passport and foreigners entry uh, changes were made. Beginning 2015, the first set of changes started. It said for people coming from three countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan and Bangladesh and of six designated religion, Hindus, Buddhists and so on. They, if they have arrived in India before December 31st, 2014, they are not deemed legal. They essentially are deemed legal and the pathway to citizenship is open. So the, uh, the three changes opens up the pathway to citizenship and two, once you, the pathway is open, the number of years that you take to get citizenship is reduced from 11 to 5. And that earlier, is was, earlier you have to be resident yeah. in India as a legal migrant to India for 11 years yes. before you could apply for citizenship. Now, under this bill, for these specific minority groups, it is 5 years. It is 5 years now. Right. And, and, and they are not deemed to be legal anymore, so therefore they, not, they can yeah. uh, apply. So, Sanjeev, explain this for more threadbare. If there are two people who have come from, say, Pakistan, one is on a boat from Pakistan, one is a Hindu, one is a Muslim, and they have come in, say, on the 1st of January 1991 into India both entered illegally under the laws at that time. So how does the situation change for those two people who have now lived in India say for now already about uh, about 20 years or 30 years? See, uh, if they have come in illegally without any papers as Sanjeev said, so they would not have been uh, you know allowed to apply for citizenship. Mm. But the changes uh, to the Passport Act, the amendment uh, done in 2015 and 16, that basically opens the door for you know Hindus, Sikhs, uh, Christians, and so on, for them uh, to apply for citizenship. Mm -hmm. So, in effect, if a Hindu and a Muslim, or uh, even a Jain and Sikh have come, the others uh, will have the option of exercising the, that uh, uh, the facility of right. opting for the citizenship. But 
the muslim who has entered illegally for him the door still remain closed for citizenship hmm. so now there is an argument being made by those who oppose uh, the caa that this changes the idea of india that this is <coughs> fundamentally a different notion of citizenship uh, just take us through that argument sir. Uh, earlier, if you uh, got citizenship through naturalization, because this bill covers only that, we are not interested in citizenship by birth, which is remains unaffected. Regardless of your religion, if you uh, completed the due process and you applied, you are eligible for citizenship. Now, this bill says uh, one thing: that you can come from these three countries. Only the six religions that we have designated. Uh, will be eligible for citizenship because only they are no longer deemed to be legal, right? Illegal, sorry. So this essentially puts a, a bar between some religions and others. Mm. I mean, just in- interestingly, even uh, Jews are not included in the six. Mm. If there are any Jews left mm. in Pakistan, mm. see the logic to that is that you know the three countries that we're talking about: Bangladesh, Afghanistan, and Pakistan. That they're all, uh, you know. Islamic countries, mm-hmm. so therefore, you know, uh, these six communities they fall under the religious minorities. Mm-hmm. So to allow them, if they are being persecuted for their religion, then the CAA allows them to opt mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. Indian citizenship. Mm-hmm. So that's the logic they've used. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I think the Home Minister also said in Parliament that this was part of the unfinished agenda of Parliament of partition. Uh, that uh, there was, of course, the the Nehru Liaquat Pact, and uh, and there was an agreement. And Pakistan didn't keep its end of the bargain for safeguarding minorities at that, and that's the argument being made from from those who support the government's point of view on this. The the question is that does it this uh, there is now a fundamental debate on what it means to be a citizen of India, uh, and and is it a Hindu nation or not? Is that what is the subtext to this entire debate? Yeah, that is the subtext to the debate because uh, the partition issues come up very frequently when the BJP explains this. Be mm. it uh, their general secretary Ram Madhav giving interviews or Mr. Amit Shah in the parliament explaining mm. things, uh, but of course the uh, the uh, or the incongruity in that argument is how did Afghanistan figure? Because Afghanistan was not part of the partition plan; it was never part of British India. But be that as it may, partition and its unfinished agenda has been explicitly mentioned by the BJP mm. as uh, one of the motivators for this bill. Mm. I would like to just add to that because since uh, you know Afghanistan was not a part of partition, uh, <clears throat> a lot of people are talking about the fact that why has the government then left out, let's say, Tamil Hindus from Sri Lanka and even uh, you know Hindu Rohingyas from Myanmar. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is, I think, where the incongruity lies because you added Afghanistan, but you left out Sri Lanka and Myanmar, who are also our neighbors mm-hmm. and where a lot of Hindus reside. So. What about them? So there seems to be, you know, that sort of distinction made for these three countries, but not for these two other countries, where you, if if the intention is to bring back or give a safe home for all Hindus residing in the region, then uh, maybe you know the government should have extended this to uh, Sri Lankan Tamils, Hindu mm-hmm. Tamils, and uh, Hindu uh, Rohingyas living in Myanmar as well. Mm-hmm. Sanjeev, you what your sense on this argument? Uh, you know, the, uh, this bill, the, in its original form, was actually introduced in 2016 in the last right. uh, Lok Sabha. So they, it went to a parliamentary committee where it was discussed threadbare, and the report of that was submitted in January this year. <coughs> so in that parliamentary committee, uh, some of the points that Sanjeev made were raised, and the Mo- in Ministry of Home Affairs was asked to come and give an explanation. Right. So in that, they where they was particularly asked if partition is the uh, motivator here. What is Afghanistan doing in this? So the Ministry of Home Affairs in uh, deposed in front of the committee, and they identified three reasons why okay. uh, Afghanistan came in: religious persecution, fear of religious persecution, and persecution because of Indian origin. Right now, so those are the three reasons why Afghanistan came in. So the controversy uh, in, let's say, DMK protesting. One of the things that DMK has been doing in its protest is identifying this uh, flaw, if you like, in the in the act that if you use these three uh, criteria. Then Sri Lankan Tamils come squarely into it. They fit into it, hmm. but they have been kept out of the bill. They are not hmm. one of the identified because Sri Lanka doesn't yeah. form with those uh, yeah. and uh, Rohingyas. And uh, actually, hmm. uh, there are quite a few Hindu Rohingyas who uh, are all persecuted at multiple levels, who have hmm. been completely kept out of it. So there are two basic, two fundamental legal objections to this. The first is that um, uh, what happens to other Hindus who are 
fleeing persecution like the Rohingyas you mentioned or, or Hindu Rohingyas or the Sri Lankan Tamils. The second is what happens to other persecuted sects, say for example the Ahmadiyyas in Pakistan who were also persecuted for not being uh, Muslim enough uh, uh, by, by the laws of Pakistan. So, so, and the third larger, uh, um, uh, the, the larger argument being made against the bill of course is that it distinguishes between a kind of refugee. When you talk about persecution, uh, uh, it, it, it distinguishes between a refugee or, or other UN definitions of what a refugee or what persecution is and it classifies some as being more equal than others. Is that a fair uh, way of, su of summing it up? Yes, that would be a fair way, if, especially if you juxtapose what you said with the, the Home Ministry's deposition before the Parliamentary Committee. It does clearly uh, identify uh, people that it wants in and people who fall within the definition of what Home Ministry says would be uh, would, would uh, hmm. qualify for uh, citizenship but will not get it. Sanjeev, let me draw you in into the debate. For those who are supporting the new legislation, they are saying that why are you worrying about all of these all of these other issues? At the end of the day, in their view, this is a humanitarian move to bring in Hindu refugees from three countries. Even if it is not perfect, even if you're not getting it, you're not letting in other Hindus in from, from other countries, from other from other places. What is stopping this humanitarian gesture? And that is a a, a question that the BJP uh, poses. The Prime Minister has also talked about it. How? Uh, what's your sense of this? See, uh, it's very clear as Sanjeev said that uh, the government has decided they want a particular kind of refugees to come to India if at all they want to come. Uh, it is a known fact that uh, the, the condition of Hindus in Pakistan and in parts of Bangladesh is very, very bad. Mm. And we've seen the numbers also decline, especially in Pakistan, uh, the, the population of Hindus has gone down. So there is a case there which the government is arguing for. And that is why they say that, you know, uh, if someone is being persecuted on the ground of religion, what is the problem if we allow them a safe mm. haven here? Mm. But the problem, I think, is happening is, it's, there are two, it's, it's happening at two levels. One is the fact that there is no clarity on behalf of the government on what next. Is there a link between uh, the CAA and the NRC like it happened in the SAM? Right. And secondly, uh, you know, how do we dispel any kind of fear? amongst people because there's a lot of rumor mongering is happening that you know CA will lead to this, CA will lead right. to that. So, so on this, the Prime Minister has said specifically that it is not linked to the National Register of Citizens which is what the big apprehension has been because because there has been a sense that you link the CA with the NRC and then it becomes a very insidious, uh, then it could become a way of discrimination for Indian nationals within, within the country. The Prime Minister has said that's not the case first but that's not necessarily what many ministers in his government and the Home Minister have been saying in the past. Let's listen in to what the BJP has been saying before the Prime Minister's rally on the CAA and the NRC. I have said that the OSC has now said that the NRC is a background. The NRC is not necessary to make a background. We are clear that the NRC is a background. No background is not necessary. बैकग्राउंड है ही हमारा घोषणा पत्र ही बैकग्राउंड सारे रिफ्यूजी को सारे शरणार्थियों को नागरिकता दिया जाएगा उसके बाद में एनआरसी बनेगी इसलिए जो शरणार्थी है उसको चिंता करने की जरूरत नहीं है घुसपैठियों को जरूर चिंता करने की जरूरत आप क्रोनोलॉजी समझ लीजिए पहले सीए भी आने जा रहा है सीए भी आने के बाद एनआरसी आएगा और एनआरसी सिर्फ बंगाल के लिए नहीं आएगा पूरे देश के लिए आएगा घुसपेटिए देश की समस्या है बंगाल चूंकि बॉर्डर स्टेट है तो बंगाल के लिए ज्यादा एक्यूट समस्या है परंतु पूरे देश की समस्या है तो पहले सीए भी आएगा सारे शरणार्थियों को नागरिकता दिया जाएगा तो स्वाभाविक रूप से एनआरसी से उनको भय रखने की जरूरत है Sanjeev, you heard what the BJP leaders have been saying. You heard the Prime Minister's clarification. The Prime Minister says there is no link between the NRC and the and the uh, citizenship amendment bill. BJP leaders before uh, before him were making that link quite explicitly. Hemant Biswa Sarma in Assam also made that link, saying that it's a it's a combo deal. Which the Prime Minister says it has been at pains to, to deny. Um, what is the link? I mean, let's keep aside the, for the moment the question of. Uh, the, whether the government is going to move ahead and link it or not. But what is the big fear if they were to be linked? 
the only experience that we have of NRC in India has been the state of Assam. Yeah. Right? Uh, the Prime Minister is right when he says there is no link. I mean, at a legal level, there is no link. The citizenship bill, as I told you, is only about the naturalization process. But the BJP in its political campaign and the Home Minister in the Parliament has linked both. Right. Now, what was the NRC in Assam about? It was about trying to, it was part of the uh, follow-up of the Assam Accord from the mid-80s, and trying to find out who are the illegal immigrants. Yeah. Now, the process that we saw was that even if I'm, for instance, I'm an Indian citizen, I, I hold a uh, voter's ID, and if the Assam process is followed, whatever I have does not, in, does not mean that I am a citizen. I have to prove right from the beginning by giving the documents, mm. which would then be traced to a family mm. tree, mm. to make sure that I am an Indian citizen. Right. So the uh, NRC, as we know, actually distrusts the documents that you have. Mm. It says... Give me your documents and then prove your proof that you come from a particular family tree, which we can trace. Mm. It basically puts the onus on people to prove their nationality. Yeah, essentially, existing citizens have to prove so, their citizens. So the big fear, Sanjeev, has been that even if you have legal documents, you have a passport, say, you have a driving license, you have an Aadhaar card, that you may not still pass the, the citizenship test if those documents don't necessarily match with those of your father or your mother or your grandfather, which is what happened in the NRC's case in Assam. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, the, uh, the Assam model uh, essentially started with the assumption that regardless of the documents that mm. you have, you're not a citizen till you prove you're a citizen. Right. right. And the documents then have to be linked to a family tree, where there was a cut-off date given in Assam, which again came from the Assam Accord, which was 1971. Mm. So. Uh, the problem for a lot in this case the Assam Accord uh, specified an NRC to take out yeah. legal, uh, illegal migrants yeah. and then the Supreme Court then uh, asked for it to be implemented it wasn't implemented yeah, it, it, was, uh, it was overseen by the Supreme Court yeah. which essentially pushed the process along hmm. and uh, nobody seems to be happy with it because 19 lakh people were left out uh, majority Hindus and all political parties seem to have criticized mm. it and even the uh, uh, gentleman from the bureaucracy who oversaw it has been transferred to another state. He's been transferred back to his parent country of Madhya Pradesh. Yeah. Uh, I think the BJP government in Assam itself has uh, raised a lot of issues with uh, yeah, uh, for all practical purposes rejected the finding. Right. Also, you know, there's uh, another clip of Amit Shah doing the rounds where he makes this uh, correlation between the CA and the NRC uh, which basically says that uh, now that uh, Almost 12 lakh Hindus have been excluded from Assam under the NRC. Mm. The CA will help them, you know, right. uh, rehabilitate again into India. But uh, where they will go and how they will go, that's a different matter. So people are saying that, you know, uh, fine, 19 lakh people are not Indians. But now you're allowing those 12 lakh people to come back into India just because they're Hindus. So what about the Muslims? Thing is that for those, so the big fear is this, if I can simplify this, is that if you have an NRC at some future date, which BGP leaders in the past have talked about, but the Prime Minister has been at pains to point out in his latest rally that they are not linked and there has been no plan for this. Uh, but if you do have an NRC in the future, um, those who are found illegal, um, firstly, that the process may not be be very robust like it was in uh, in Assam. It wasn't robust at all. But then those who are left out and found illegal, among those, the Hindus get some kind of a free pass uh, through the CA, whereas the Muslims don't get a free pass on that. Uh, the Muslims would not get a free pass anywhere in India. But even, I mean, I'm, I'm a little skeptical about even Hindus getting a free pass because in Assam, uh, the Bengali speaking Hindus get a free pass but if you're let's say in a state like Maharashtra uh, let's uh, a Marat, uh, Maharashtrian Hindu who would find it very difficult to convince anyone that he's a uh, entrant from Bangladesh hmm. <laughs> that, 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 that's quite <coughs> um, but there is also the larger legal challenge to the act itself which is on grounds of Article 14 that is discriminatory at a larger level or it, it violates the notion of equality. Uh, and the legal opinion on that is divided between between different groups of, of eminent lawyers. Yeah, so um, that's the beauty of being a lawyer. You know, you listen to one lawyer and he can totally convince you with his argument. So we've heard lawyers from both sides speaking on the issue and you know, it's really very unclear as to, uh, in the end it'll all depend on which way the courts decide that uh, which way they'll go with or with whose argument they'll go with. So Sanjeev, there are two points of view on this. One is that since it was talked, it was said that this is the unfinished agenda of partition, 
the fact of the matter is pakistan was made as a <coughs> land for muslims that's right india was a place with a hindu majority but it was not envisaged in the constitution as a homeland for hindu it was envisaged as a uh, as a as a homeland for all religious denominations so i it is these uh, now there is also a view which says that hindus have a greater right on on what was left of india after partition it is the, de- the debate between these three views that's what's animating the current protest uh, i think at a political level and uh, it it certainly is but uh, legally finally the, everything has to uh, the touchstone is the constitution hmm. and uh, sanjeev said depending on which lawyer you speak to they come up with some very interesting arguments and they're very convincing usually uh, it really legally it entirely depends on the supreme yeah because you know if you go by past precedent there are some you know provisions within article 14 as well hmm. which can be used hmm. but they have to be uh, you know flowing with the bill hmm. as per se so it totally depends reasonable changes uh, can be done as amit chap pointed out in yeah part. so i mean you know nothing is like uh, cast in stone as far as article 14 is concerned and really it's up to the court to decide on how they view uh, you know that uh, change that is being made in it if at all that is being made hmm. so this link between the nrc and the ca again sanjeev how um the government has let it be known the prime minister has now spoken his word is final on this will this now end up defanging the protest a little bit will people be assured by it or do can do you expect to see more more unrest as we go forward i think in any case the protest would have uh, you know they all have a shelf life and it would have uh, died down sooner than later but the larger question is uh, will the prime minister statement at least remove the sting i am not entirely sure because uh, whatever that uh, mr amit shah whose fall practical purpose is the second most important man in the government and a lot of other bjp leaders have said they've all been said in public domain they've been said in parliament hmm. so uh, there will be an element of mistrust at least among some people they hmm. don't entirely uh, go by what the prime minister said yesterday see there is there is merit in what sanjeev is saying because uh, you know we've seen uh, courts of Prime Minister Modi in an interview where he spoke about the NRC. Hmm. Uh, there is also a lot of clips are being shared on social media of our President Kovin also hmm. talking about hmm. uh, NRC, though not in the way that it will be implemented all across India, but hmm. the fact that he mentioned it. Hmm. So uh, there is this deep mistrust with the government That's right the now. Point. That is this a backtracking by the Prime Minister? What is government intending to do earlier, or? Uh, um uh, or the government is speaking in a multiplicity of voices i i think they're speaking in a multiplicity of voices because uh, there is no uh, he he's really talking on a very narrow technical point yes it is correct to say the citizenship amendment act is not linked to nrc but the bjp we have we are not entirely sure the bjp has taken it off the table because uh, I mean, you had the Homans to say this this month in the Lok Sabha that it's very much part of the mm-hmm. agenda. So the basic reason why this unrest is being fueled is the fact that if at all the NRC is extended to other states, mm. then the onus will be on people to prove their mm. citizenship, mm. and that is where the problem lies. That there is this sort of mistrust with the current government that they think that you know Muslims will be targeted. Mm. So the government now is, you know, uh, in damage control mode. They're trying very hard to tell people mm. that, look, uh, we are not going to implement this across mm. the country. Uh, we will take steps to make sure that you know, feelings of people are assuaged. So, so several state governments, several non-BJP state governments have said that they will not implement uh, the NRC as and when it comes. Um, you are seeing a lot of international headlines. you've seen a lot of people protesting about the idea of india as they see it um does the prime minister's statement resolve many of the confusions around the ca or this is just the beginning of a much larger long drawn out argument i i think it's the beginning of a long drawn out argument uh, primarily because things that you know the protests are not uh, because of something that has been done uh, it, right now it is about the anticipation of what might be done mm. that's a trust issue mm. now i don't think trust is either broken overnight or comes back mm. overnight mm. so which is why i don't think uh, we'll see the end of this mm. sanjeev 
Yeah, I I would tend to agree with him that, that there is this general fear among the people that if NRC is rolled out across the country, then you know a certain section or a particular community could be targeted. Right. So on the protests, we are now seeing uh, the beginning uh, at the TOI. We've been tracking protests across the country. We are now seeing a large number of pro protests also happening, um, and the slogan there is. Um, देश के जो हैं गद्दार उनको मारो जूते चार इन सम केसेस द वर्ड गोली इज आल्सो बीइंग यूज्ड um do you see this kind of polarization which is happening now between the pro and the against camps uh, also getting a, a religious tinge to it almost certainly it will have a religious tinge uh, because the uh, uh, there's no escaping that really a lot of it uh, is uh, you know at least the ground level regardless of what the mm. leaders say it will have a religious tinge Right. Uh, well, on that note, we will have to uh, to close it there. Keep watching the Times of India, uh, but we hope this this discussion has helped uh, at least clear the air uh, on some of the issues that we've all been grappling with on the CAA uh, and on the National Register of Citizenship, the prospects of it uh, as we go forward or not. But thanks very much for watching the Times of India. If you like this discussion please don't forget to add some stars to us on facebook there's a feature there on the facebook page which you can click and you can give stars to any discussion or any show that you like if you like what we're talking about if you like uh, this this kind of a program please do send us ask your stars we will uh, we will really appreciate it we value your feedback we would love to hear what you think